What is up, Sopranos fans? Kino here. I'm back with another Soprano log. Uh, today we're looking at the fourth episode of the third season, Employee of the Month. Now this is a very heavy episode, um, some very serious subject matter going on here. Uh, but before we get into the meat of the episode, I just want to talk about uh, the other storylines and just knock those out real quick. So Ralph is trying to bond with Jackie. He's, of course, dating Jackie's mother, Rosalie, um, and Jackie Jr. is just not happy with that. He doesn't like Ralph. Ralph tries bonding with him. It doesn't really work. So instead, Ralph takes Jackie along to make a collection. Ralph ends up starting a fight uh, with this guy, basically kind of to impress Jackie and just show him that he's a, you know, a tough guy, a real gangster. And they get into a fight uh, and he has Jackie Jr. help him beat the guy up. And they end up robbing him. Um, and it just kind of ingrains him to Ralphie and makes him see that since Jackie wants to be a gangster, Ralph can maybe help him with this. And Ralph has some serious connections. So this doesn't sit well with Tony. Tony does not want uh, Jackie Jr. involved in the life at all. Um, and so this is one of the things that leads him to pass over Ralphie um, and instead make Gigi the new captain of the April crew. And this really disappoints Ralphie because he's the best earner in the family. He's making a lot of money for Tony. Um, but Tony just really doesn't trust him um, with all this crazy behavior of his. And we're going to see more of that this season. Um, the second thing going on is that Johnny Sack moves to New Jersey. He buys this really big mansion, a lot of land. And Tony is worried because uh, with Johnny so close, he's worried that John will stick his nose in Tony's business and then try to manipulate affairs to the Lupertazzi family's benefits. And John assures him that it's just a place for him to live, but Tony is worried, and we're going to see that he does stick his beak in and try to, again, manipulate business to suit his ends. So that's the second thing going on this episode. Uh, the third and last thing before we get into the big stuff is uh, Janice has Svetlana's leg. Um, she stole it to force her to give back the records that Livia gave her. Janice says that she wants it to connect with her mother, but everyone knows she just wants to sell the records because they're worth a lot of money. She refuses to give it back, so Svetlana sends some Russian goons to go get it back for her. Uh, when she backtalks them, they end up beating her up and you know, even breaking a few ribs. Um, and finally, she gives back the leg to them. And in the hospital, she just realizes that she's hit rock bottom. You know, she stole a, a woman's leg. She realizes just how pathetic she's been. And she decides that she's going to become a born-again Christian. Um, and Tony's kind of fed up with this because this is her typical thing. You know, that was the whole thing with um, her being a, a Hindu before. And she's always kind of searching for an identity. And it's always costing Tony time and resources because now he has to go avenge Janice um, or else he'll look weak if he allows his sister uh, to get beat up by these guys. So he's just really annoyed with Janice and all this, all the problems that she puts him through. Um, but Janice decides that this is her opportunity to try to become a better person. And we'll, we'll see how that plays out this season, but I have my doubts. Now, the main thing happening in this episode revolves around Melfi. Melfi has gotten back together with her ex-husband, um, the guy who is part of the anti-Italian defamation league. Um, he wants her to get rid of Tony as a patient. Uh, he does not like Tony because he hates gangsters and he hates the negative um, stereotype that they bring on the all Italians. And Melfi realizes in her session with Tony that you know he's really not taking these things seriously. He, even though he says he wants to get better and not have these panic attacks anymore. You know, he's not devoted to it. He doesn't really care about getting better. Um, so she actually decides that it might be time for him to move on and see someone else. She recommends that he goes and sees a behavioral therapist, someone who will more directly help him with his panic attacks. Uh, but Tony is, doesn't like the idea. He wants to stick with Melfi um, because he likes their relationship so far. While Melfi is leaving work uh, late at night, um, she's attacked and actually ends up being raped um, in the stairwell of her building. It's actually an incredibly brutal scene and really hard to watch. She goes to the hospital and talks to the police. Uh, they catch the guy, but unfortunately, due to some sort of legal fiasco, they mishandled the evidence kit or something like that. They have to let him go, and he basically faces no repercussions um, for raping Melfi. And this really infuriates her. She feels victimized again, like there's no sense of justice, and she feels powerless about the whole process. 
she has a dream um, involving her getting stuck and this guy coming after her again. Uh, but before he can, he's attacked by a Rottweiler dog. The dog just tears him to pieces. Um, and she realizes that the dog represents Tony. She can, of course, tell Tony about what happened. And knowing him, he would have this guy killed and torn to pieces and she would get the justice that she wants. She realizes, of course, though, um, that she can't do that. It's One, it's illegal. But even beyond that, it's not right for her to go and get justice um, in her own hands. She's supposed to leave it to the cops as a good, upstanding citizen. At therapy, though, when she's talking to Tony, Tony says that he's open to going to see another psychiatrist. He's thought about it, and he's willing to go see someone else. Um, but she actually turns him down. She wants him to stay now. And we can see that Melfi feels a little bit safe with Tony. He is a protective figure for her. We've kind of played around with that idea that she, you know, is vicariously living through his mob activities. And in this case, it really benefits her because she feels safe and powerful now having him as a, you know, potential ally. However, she starts crying in the middle of their session. Tony goes to comfort her. It's funny, you can see him kind of hesitate for a minute because he doesn't really understand what's happening. He thinks he did something wrong. He's asking like, you know, what did I do? What did I do? But she tells him to go sit back down. And it's actually an interesting callback because remember in the dream, she was thinking about Tony as the Rottweiler dog. And she t when she tells him to sit, again, it's like she's talking to a dog. That's kind of how she sees him right now. And he asks her if there's anything she wants to tell him. And we can see her debating in her head, you know, should she tell Tony or, or not? And in the end, she says no. And the episode ends. And a lot of people were very disappointed that she didn't tell Tony. They really wanted to see Tony have this guy killed. But I think it's a very powerful ending. It's it's a very powerful moment in the series where she chose her integrity. Um, she chose her, you know, ethics over, you know, making herself feel better by getting revenge. And of course, if she had told Tony and he did something about this, it would have ruined their relationship. She would not have been able to treat him after that anymore. She would have been compromised. Um, so I think it's really powerful. It speaks volumes about her character. Definitely not satisfying to the people who wanted this guy just torn to pieces. But I think a realistic and really well-written ending. So very powerful episode. A lot of horrific things happen. But that is the episode. And stay tuned for the next Soprano Log. Where hopefully things will be a little bit more lighthearted than they were this time. Uh, thanks and stay tuned for that soon.